Good morning, and I'm so glad you guys joined us this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, for your great abundance of mercy, grace, and Lord, provision unto us as your children of God. We look to you, Lord, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we know that as we come to you as our source, Lord, that God, that everything that we could ever hope, desire, or imagine, Lord, is in you. And we ask you, Lord, for your word to be given today as we break the bread of life. We ask you, Father, that you would bless everyone who is online, who has joined us on Facebook, who has joined us on the conference call line this morning. Lord, we ask that the word would go forth. And, Lord, that the word would be unhindered, unchecked in any outside force today. And, Lord, we thank you that you are on the throne. And, God, that you are God, Lord of all, and King of kings. And, Lord, we just thank you for your provision, your mercy, your grace, your power and anointing. In Jesus' name, and we say amen, amen. amen. Good to see you this morning. Uh, if you're in Facebook this morning, getting signed in, check in, say hello. Hello, good morning. Hey, Darla. Hey, good morning, Sister Darla. Uh, I know Sister Irma's online. I know she was checking in. Brother Russell's on the conference call this morning. Hi, Debbie. So. Yeah, I know you're there, too. Good morning. So, yeah, just um, it's a little bit different this morning, but I'm going to tell you what. The enemy may strike, but God is still in control, and God is uh, God is no respecter of person. We know that we everybody's used that word over and over, unprecedented times with this uh, COVID. Um, but, you know, we stand victorious no matter what the enemy may say right. or do. And I'm going to tell you, it's no... No consequence that, um, uh, uh, not consequence, no coincidence, I'll get my word right. straight this morning, that today's message is, um, is Fear Not. It's our last uh, message of our series under Fear Not, but today's Fear Not, our weapons are mighty in God. Yes. Our weapons Amen. are mighty in God. And I want to I wanna share uh, a few things with you guys this morning. Uh, from that, we're going to be uh, looking at the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to have you uh, with your Bibles go ahead and turn to Isaiah. And we're going to be in a couple of chapters here. And let me, uh, let me get here. I'm going to, I'm going to go through a provision, but uh, talk about the theme of, of what we're going to discuss in Isaiah this morning. But uh, we're going to be looking in, in the, the two books. Um, the first one is going to be in chapter 36. You turn to Isaiah chapter 36. And leading into our text today, um, there's a king of Syria named Sennacherib, and um, and you, you have to kind of go back in in the book of Isaiah and kind of get a little bit of a, a history here. Um, but what happened? We see here leading up to our text today, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, now he is uh, threatening Judah, and so just a note here. That they once wanted the, the the tribe of Judah once wanted to rely on Assyria for protection, Assyria and Egypt both. And if you read back, Isaiah is a very large prophetic book. But if you go back and read in the in the verses there, um, they actually King uh, Hezekiah actually uh, replaced the uh, the worship of God Almighty, Jehovah God. And he also started looking to Egypt and Assyria for protection. And, and there's a little bit of a lesson here uh, for us today is who is our source? Who is our provider? Because this is God's remnant of people. This is his chosen generation. And yet, once again, we find that the prophets are, are telling the children that, look, God is your source. God is the one that you have to, to look to. He is the one that provides all of our needs. He's the one that provides right. protection. Amen. And we should be the ones that should be praising him and, and bringing yes. our offerings of praise and sacrifice of praise to him and also looking to him as our source, our protection, our provider. Um, there's nothing that God cannot do. And we know this over and over, but in human nature, we find ourselves time and time again looking in this natural world, looking around us, Instead of looking in our in our uh, spiritual eyes, if you will, and discernment, and looking to God, and so um, I, I want to I want to share a few things here with you. Uh, if you if you uh, have one of those uh, Bible apps and so forth, 
it's, it's pretty interesting to go back and look at some of the outline of the book of Isaiah. But when you get to chapter 36 and 37, uh, this king, uh, Sennacherib, boasts against God. And we're going to get into that here in just a moment in some scripture. And then we're going to find in 37 what happens to this king. Um, but before we get into there, um, just part of the overview, the question kind of um, stands out in my mind that we find these people, these followers of God, these children of God, leading double lives. They have the name of God. They seek the blessing of God. But then we see in Isaiah, uh, in the previous chapters, that, as I mentioned, they, want, they look to other countries and other kingdoms for protection and provision. It was almost leading this double life. Do we know any Christians today that are that way, that live in, live in this duplicity of life where um, they, they uh, give God lip service, as the prophets were saying here in Isaiah, that God said, they give me lip service, but their hearts are far from me. Heaven, uh, help us. Lord, help us that we do not um, approach God that way, that we give God lip service only, yes. and we're not, and our hearts are not lovers of God. And I pray that today that as a, as a nation, as a whole, as a church body, new destiny, um, the summons of God as a whole, all Christians, all followers of Jesus, that we, that we take some time to um, think on this, meditate yes, on amen. this, that we, uh, that we pray that God forgive us, that if we have come and approached God and just give him lip service and not truly from our heart, because the Lord is wanting us to be worshipers of him. And, and what does it say? That we should worship him in truth and in spirit. Truth and in spirit. Are you coming to the Lord untruthfully? Are you coming to the Lord with doubts and fears in your life? And you're saying, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. But I can't let go of this. I can't let you have this, Lord. Mm. Um, and this is what we're finding that they said, Lord, we're your children. We love you. King Hezekiah now. <clears throat> and yet we get into this verse and they have these alliances with Assyria and Egypt. And let's get into the, let's get into the verses now and let's see what happens. Uh, Isaiah chapter 36 and we start in verse one. And now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, 14 years now. So this has been going on now. They had these alliances for some time now. And uh, the king of Hezekiah, uh, the 14th year of Hezekiah, that uh, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah, and he took them. He took them. He, uh, th this is their friend. Have you ever had a friend to stab you in the back? Have you ever had somebody that you put trust into, and they, they literally took advantage of you? Well, this is what we're seeing here with King Hezekiah. And then the king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh with a great army of locusts to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And he stood at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the, on the highway of the fuller's field. And Elikim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came out to him. So this is an entourage uh, of King Hezekiah coming out to meet the, um, the man that's got the word for the, the opposing king now. And <clears throat> we see in verse 4, Then Rebshakeh said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Now listen to this, Thus say the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? I say to you, Speak of having plans and power for war, but they are mere words. Now in whom do you trust? Listen to this. Whom do you trust, Jerusalem? Who do you trust, Hezekiah? Who do you trust today, Christian? Come on. Now in whom do you trust that you rebel against mm. me? Look, you are trusting in the staff of a broken reed, Egypt, on which if a man leans, I will go into his house and pierce it. So is Pharaoh the king of Egypt to all who trust in him. So he's saying, you know, you, you even can trust on Pharaoh and Egypt, but they're not going to help you. But if you say to me, now listen to this. But if you say to me in verse 7, we trust in the Lord our God. Right. Is it not 
he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away? Oh, I mean, church right there. Um, the enemy is mocking, literally, the sins that they have done. They have taken away the altars of God, and they know this. They know this. And now he's mocking, saying, now that you've done this, these sins are upon you, who's going to save you now? You right. can't go to Egypt, you can't go to Pharaoh, and you can't even go to your own God now. You are sunk. You're in, you're in a deep trouble now, mister. Verse 8, now therefore I urge you, give a pledge to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses. Mm -hmm. Talk about mocking him now. I'm going to give you 2,000 horses if you're able on, on your part to put riders on them. Look, I'm going to even give you some weapons to help you out to defeat me. But I, I, but he's sitting there saying, you don't even have enough manpower to ride 2,000 horses. Isn't it just like Satan? If he comes in and attacks, and he says, look at all your failures. Look at all the things you've done against God. God's not going to help you. And look, I'm going to even, I'm going to, I might even come in and help you out a little bit. Mockingly. And he's like, and then you can't even help yourself. I'm going to give you enough to maybe give you a sense of false security. I'm going to give you an inkling of hope that maybe, hey, you know what? I got, I got enough weaponry. Right. Maybe I can do this on my own. But then this, the enemy is literally mocking, saying, you don't even have enough men to ride those horses. Come on. Mm. Come on. Let me tell you what. That is exactly how the enemy operates, isn't it? Verse 9. How then will you repel one captain of the least, the least of my master's servants? And put your trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen. Have I now come up without the Lord against the land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up and destroy this land and destroy it. Now, Elikim, Shebna, and Joash of the, uh, Reb, excuse me, uh, Reb Sheka, please speak your servants in Aramaic. So they're telling, they're telling him to don't speak this in Hebrew. It says, for we understand Aramaic, but do not speak in Hebrew. In the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said, has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words and not, and not to the men who sit on the wall who will eat and drink their own waste with you? Mm. I mean, this man in the, in the modern day terms, I don't know if it's modern day, but this man is talking some smack. Yeah. He has come against him in a very strong and powerful way. And let me tell you, the, the people, the children of God, are literally sitting on the fence and watching and listening. Um, you know, isn't it like people today, when there's bad news, when there's any kind of bad news, there's news on the TV, there, we see, we see uh, I, the other night I was coming home from... Um, uh, from coming out and mowing, and, and I was on my way home, and it was getting dark, and when I realized there was police cars uh, on just about every street, and there must have been a, a, a big drug bust, because I was driving with my window rolled down, and a deputy sheriff even pulls up to beside me and stops the car in the middle of the street, and they draw their weapons out, and I mean, there's police, it was dozens of police cars everywhere, and I'm just trying to get home. But yet, somewhere inside, you, you're sitting in this vehicle, and it's a little bit of amazement. You're a little bit of an awe, like, what is going on? And then in human nature that we just want to sit on the sideline and see what's going to happen next, mm -hmm. to see what's going on. You know, it, it's, it's uh, you know, the old antage, bad news travels quickly. And, uh, and even here, we see that in this first chapter that, that uh, this bad news is being broadcasted out by the enemy. And he's taunting the children of Israel. And yet, the, the, the chosen people of God, the remnant of God's right. people, are sitting on the wall, watching, waiting, and to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Now, <clears throat> when we get to, um, we get down to uh, here, verse 13. And he, um, Reb Shaka, the, the spokesman for uh, the king Sennacherib, stood and called out with a loud voice in Hebrew. He's now speaking their language. He has been speaking their language. Isn't it just like the enemy, though, to, um, to speak our language? What's the old saying? Push mm -hmm. our buttons. 
He knows exactly how to push our buttons. Right. And 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 if we let him push our buttons. And so he he's going to cry out in Hebrew, "Hear the words of the great king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord saying, your Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given to the land a hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make peace with me and be a, and me uh, make peace with me be a present and come out to me and every one of you will eat from his own vine and eat from his own fig tree and every one will drink of his own water his own cistern and i will come and take you away to a land like your own land and and the land of grain and new wine and a land of bread and vineyards beware lest hezekiah persuades you saying the lord will deliver us he has one of uh, he has one of the gods of the nations delivered his land and, and uh, has any one of the gods of the nations delivered its land from the hand of King Assyria? And where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sephrazim? Indeed, have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered the countries from my hand? And the Lord shall deliver Jerusalem from my hand? I mean, verses 13 through 20 is very significant. This is where it's starting to get down to the brass tacks. Notice what, notice what Rabshakeh, the spokesman for the enemy here, is saying. He's saying, don't listen to God. Don't listen to what the Lord Almighty has said. You have sinned against God. You tore down his altars. You're giving him false worship. And now you look for false protection from all these other kings, including us. And now who's going to save you? Don't listen to Hezekiah because Hezekiah is deceiving you. And look, the enemy is even saying here, come be our present. Let it come on. You, you surrender now. We'll give you land. We'll give you this. We'll give you your own cisterns of water to draw from. It'll be just like your land. Everything will be the same. You just come on with us. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that how the enemy, isn't that how the enemy is? Isn't that how sin is? Isn't that how doubt and fear works? Right. And it, Satan will come and say, Look how he deceived Eve. Did the Lord really say you would die? Mm, come on. It, just, just come on. If you, if you do this, you will be a god. Mm. If you eat this fruit, Eve, you, your eyes will be open. You have knowledge and wisdom. You'll be a god. And the thing is, she, she listened to the lies of the enemy, and she, she took it, and she ate that forbidden fruit. And the enemy is saying, same tricks here, church. Same tricks. Did, did God, is God really going to be able to do these things? Does God care enough about you to help you? Look, look, all the, look, look what a mess you are. You're on drugs. You, you, you've lied. You cheated on your taxes. I mean, come on. I mean, just whatever the list might be. Mm, come on. He drags up your problems, your past, your past failures, and lays it out before you and says, look, you are a failure. How are you ever going to amount anything to God? God doesn't care about you. And furthermore, God's not going to help you. But I tell you what, you come to my side, you do what I tell you to. Listen, everybody, everybody does it. Everybody, you know, it's, it's not going to hurt anything. In fact, you, 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 you can get ahead. You know, you, you can get, you, you can get all the things you want. Grain, wine, your own cistern, your own land. It's just like what you have here with, with God, but it'll be better. You'll be in control. You'll be your own, you'll be your own boss. Mm. It'll be the, everything you wanted. Come on. Come on. You don't, it, 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 look, we're here, we're here to help you. We're, we're going to give you all these things. You're going to be a present for us, but we're going to be family. We're going to be, we're going to be all that that you could be and, 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 and more. Don't listen to the king. Don't listen to that, don't listen to that that old outdated book, the Word of God, mm. it's it's archaic. Those Christians are out of date. They're out of touch with reality. You need to come over here on our side where it's fun and mm. happening and mm. all the good things are going on. Does that sound familiar? The same approach. The same tactics. God, God, God says that the, that the attacks of the enemy... Uh, 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 he's had a method. His methodology has never changed. 
And look, we're seeing it right here. Right here in the book of Isaiah. But look at this. Get down to verse 21. But the people of God. But they held their peace, and they answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was, do not answer him. Do not answer him. And um, sometimes we get into a, <laughs> sometimes we get into a, a bind, or find ourselves under attack, or we're in that valley of the shadow of death, as we read in the twenty-third psalm. Sometimes we um, we're tempted. Mm -hmm. We're tempted to use this thing right here, our mouth. Right. We're tempted to say, "God, where are you?" God, why have you always left me when I need you the most? God, why do all these bad things happen to me? Why is it that I that I try to do something and then I all of a sudden I fail? Or what, every time I try to do something good, something bad happens to me. And and yet we see here an example in this word: they didn't open their mouth when they were under attack. There's a lesson right there. Right. Guard your mouth. Job said that I, I would put slap my hand over my mouth lest I'd said something to offend God. And and we do not we do not need to find ourselves so involved, so wrapped up in the situation, in the circumstance, that we find ourselves speaking negatively of God or what God can do to help us. And and wisdom was the exercise in here that they not speak, that they not give a reply to the devil, to the enemy. You see, the scripture, if you go back and look at that, it says that they were, when, the, when they said, don't, don't speak to him in, in Hebrew, the children of Israel, the people standing by, they were sitting on the fence listening, waiting to see what happens. I told you I was going to come back to that for just a moment, but I, I, I want to ask you this question um, about, about that, sitting on the fence. Today, during this COVID pandemic, during the trials and tribulations of the financial crisis and, and a, the political unrest, my question to you is, church, child of God, are you sitting on the fence? Are you sitting on the fence taking a let's wait and see approach? I pray not. I pray not. But God God doesn't want you watching and waiting. He wants you working. Yes. He wants you active in the kingdom. He wants you praying and seeking and, and loving each other. He wants you rebuking the enemy. He wants you taking authority yes. that he give you in Jesus Christ's name by the power of Christ and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I defeated death, hell, and the grave. He's got the keys to those. And he said, I give them to whom I choose. And you know who he gave them to you? To you? He gave them to you. Yes, amen. And, and we are sitting with the keys in our pocket, sitting on the wall, listening to the, listening to the banters of the enemy, saying, you're nothing. Mm -hmm. You are sinful. Yes, we're sinful. We're sinners. But we're saved by grace. Whoa. Hallelujah. We're saved by grace. It's not about our righteousness. We're filthy rags. I fail every single day. But I tell you, it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God and his power and his mercy. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm yes. redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm nothing on my own but through him. All these things. Paul said in, in Romans chapter 8, he said, what can separate us from the love of God? What can? And he goes through that list. He said, but I'm convinced. I am totally convinced. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Can you, give, can you just stop and just Hallelujah. thank Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that nothing Hallelujah. can separate us thank from the love Jesus. of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Praise the Lord. I wish we were in the sanctuary today, boy. We'd be. <laughs> Let me tell you, church. Yeah, it doesn't matter. How the enemy comes. It doesn't matter. I mean, the, the enemy is going to come. The enemy is going to attack. That's his job. Right. 
But our job is not to sit on the fence. It's not to sit on the sidelines. Our job is to be in the trenches. There was that old Baptist song, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. <laughs> I'm on the battlefield. Yes. Don't be sitting on the sidelines. Scripture says in James, faith without works is dead. Yes. Church, I want to challenge you today. Don't give, don't give the enemy an ounce of credit. They didn't, they didn't respond to him. They stood their ground. But the second part of what they did is they went, in the next chapter, they went to Isaiah. They went to the man mm. of the Lord. <laughs> Praise God that we can go, that we can go to Jesus. Yes. We can take it to him. And we say, Lord, look at, look at what the enemy has come against and trying to do. See, down in fear had the children of Israel, most of them sitting back on the sideline, mm -hmm. had them sit back, taking that weight and watch for it. Listen, Thomas doubted. Thomas, one of Jesus' own disciples, that what, what we call him, Doubting Thomas. Poor guy, he can't get over that. But I'm going to tell you <laughs> what, I don't think you and I would have done any better. True. We would have we literally, what they saw, Jesus being persecuted and beaten and, and sped upon and, 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 and literally everything that happened on the crucifixion. And when people started coming back saying, I saw Jesus. He, he was here just the other day. And you know, I saw with my eyes and I heard with my ears. I felt the emotions of him being crucified and being buried. I saw it. Hey, that's real. Church, it was real. But what they, what they didn't remember, but they did remember later when Jesus opened their minds, the scripture says, that he had told them all these things. They just didn't understand. But see, Thomas was doubting Thomas. But Jesus told him, Jesus told him, he said, come here, put, put your hand in my hands. Put, pr thrust your hand in my side. See, it's me. I'm real. Right. But see, Jesus went on to say, blessed. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Oh, Lord. Church, you are blessed. We are blessed. Because we believe in Jesus. We have faith in our risen Savior and King. Hallelujah. And we're blessed. And these people, in the book of Isaiah, we get to chapter 37, and they come to Isaiah. And look, it says in verse uh, 2, Then they sent Eliakim, who was over the household of Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered in sackcloth. It tells me that they were, were repentant. They were repentant. I pray that the Christians today in this country are repentant of heart. That they would say, Lord, I'm truly sorry for the things I've done. Repentance means to change of behavior and of mind, to do it never again. These people were repentant before the Lord in sackcloth. And they went to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and they said to him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy, for the children have come to the birth, but there is no strength to bring them forth. They didn't have no strength to fight. They were, they were frozen in fear, if you will, paralyzed in fear. Verse 4 in chapter 37, It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words, a Reb Shaka, the enemy spokesperson. Because again, they're like, we, we've sinned against God. We don't even have a leg to stand on. Maybe God will hear what the enemy has said. And look what he says. Hear what the enemy said. To whom the master of the king of Assyria has sent the reproach, reproach of the living God and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. They're just praying, God, would you at least rebuke the words the enemy spoke over us? Hmm. That's their hope. Yes. But praise God, they yeah. went to the place of hope. Glory. So what we have here is that they sought the man of God. They sought God. And we see that later in the chapter that Isaiah assures the deliverance of his people. And we get to that point that in Isaiah 
that God sent a spirit upon Sennacherib. And he heard a rumor. <laughs> he heard a rumor. <laughs> and the rumor was so great that he had to turn and go. God said, the enemy is not going to step one foot oh, in my land. Hallelujah. The enemy's not going to shoot an arrow into the city. Hallelujah. And that, that came to pass, church. That word of God came to pass. And my challenge to you this morning is this. Get the word of God in you. Yes. Find out what God says yes. about you and his promises to you. Find out what, what the word of God is telling you today in, in your struggles, in your battles. I want to share a, a few things here. And Donnie, would you let's see if there's on that, on that paper over there. I want to share a couple, a couple points in this scripture here uh, in chapter 37. One, uh, one thing, thank you. One thing is that notice that when they came to Isaiah, when they came to Isaiah in, in chapter 37, verse 23, whom have you reproached and, uh, and blasphemed? And against whom have you raised your voice and lifted up your eyes on high against the Holy One of Israel? This is God's response, part of God's response to Sennacherib. Sennacherib uh, puffed himself up. Mm. Sennacherib had some victories in his kingdom. Listen to me, church. Satan might have some victories in your life along the way. The enemy brags about his great force. The enemy brags about his power over you or his power in general and what he can do and all these things. But God said his army, the enemy's army, was mere men and not angels. Mm. That his horses were mere flesh and not spirit. Where the enemy of this world around us is operating and trying to come against us, and we get our eyes looking on the flesh. Get your eyes off man. Get your eyes off yes. flesh. And put yes. your eyes upon the Lord. Glory. Because the word says, the weapons of our warfare are mighty. Yes. We're tearing down those strongholds. If you're dealing with a stronghold in your life, a fear of addiction, of defeat, let God's power, let God's powerful weapons bring down those strongholds. Yes. We're going to declare a few things this morning. Glory. And we're going to stand upon the promises of God. Yes. A second thing, the enemy brags about his power. The second thing, the enemy boasts about what he's going to do to you. Mm. He's also going to boast about what he can do for you. But don't listen. Don't listen to him. Yes. The, the enemy is a liar. The scripture says that Satan is the father of all lies. So everything he says out of his mouth, he can promise you land. He can promise you vineyards in your own cistern. Just like everything you have here, church. But, he, but he's going to take them into captivity and bondage. Uh, I heard an old saying when I was a kid. They said, you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. Mm. You get on that train that he's on, and, and you just never know when you're going to be able to get off of that thing. But he boasts about what he'll do. The third thing, the enemy belittles your God. Mm. Uh, I'm going to put it in a different word than what Isaiah used. He blasphemed God. Mm. He blasphemed God. He was so bold to say that what is God to me? Ooh. Oh, church, that man messed up big time when he said that. He was puffed up. He blasphemed God against God's ability to help. Satan, <laughs> Satan belittles you and blasphemes against God. What is God going to do to help you against me? Right. But in the end, we read to the end of this, we see that God gave Israel a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He brought them through. Didn't even have to fire a weapon. Didn't even have to get them 2,000 horses and 2,000 men to ride on. 
God didn't need them. Yeah. Did you hear that? God did not need mm. anything. My he God. sent one angel. He sent one angel. And put it in the heart of the enemy. A rumor. Something going on back there. You need to go take care of that. Mm -hmm. God can change the priorities of your attacker. Yes. That you're no longer a priority to him. Mm. Do you hear that? Don't let the enemy lie to you and deceive you. And just using mere words and, and then attacking God. Come on. You belong to God. You are God's chosen generation. You are God's people. The scripture says you are his possession. An enemy is going to come in and say, you're going to be my present. I don't think so, devil. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Not today, Satan. Can you say that? Not today, Satan. Not today. I am the Lord's. I am yes, redeemed the by the God Almighty. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ paid the sacrifice for me. It was for naught. He died for me. I am victorious in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. God is going to give you a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that. What are you facing today that the enemy's lied to you? He's puffed himself up against you and God. And what, what are you today looking for and needing a breakthrough from God? God doesn't want you sitting on the fence. He doesn't want you to be a spectator. And God certainly doesn't want you to fall back in fear. God does want you to repent of your sin. God does want you to repent of fear. God wants you to say, Lord, I, I, I am so sorry that I have stopped worshiping you with my heart. I've only been giving you lip service, Lord. I'm talking to somebody this morning. God doesn't want you to play to church. He wants you to be his church. Come on. We're to be the body of Christ. He's the head. We want the head to float around and do things, but he, but the head needs the body. Right. The body needs the head. Right. Jesus said, I am a father of one, and that profile is followed through with you and I. Jesus and you are one. You flow in him. He flows in you. Let the Holy Spirit, I shuckle, Lord, my high, let the Holy Spirit flow through you this morning in Jesus' name. Stand up against the attacks of the enemy. Tell the enemy, not today, Satan. Not ever, Satan. I am the Lord's. I am his yes. treasure. I am his possession and you cannot have me. Come on. You cannot have me fear. You cannot have me doubt. You cannot have me uh, addiction. Anxiety. Right, yes. Amen. I am the Lord's and he is mine. Woo! Yes, glory. It is his righteousness in me, not mine. Can you say amen this morning? Amen, amen. Come on, hallelujah. Just stop, just stop right where you are and give glory. him some praise. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo, glory, thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Worship him with your heart and spirit and truth, Ooh, church. Lord, we don't need to give God lip service. He don't want your lip service. He wants your heart service. He wants your mind, body, soul, and spirit. He wants the whole thing. He's a jealous God, and he ain't going to share you with anybody. You're the Amen. apple of his eye. He died for you. Amen. Will you live for him? Ooh, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's looking for some people to say, yes, Lord, yes, this morning. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just because you're a child of God is not going to yeah. keep the attack from coming. Just because you're a child of God doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to come knocking on your doorstep and saying, look here, look I, look what I'm going to do to you. Hallelujah. But God said, keep your mouth shut about him and just keep your praises on me. Mm. Look to me. Repent. Search your heart. Have you torn down some altars of God in your life and put up some false things? Repent of it, church. Put the sackcloth and the ash on your heart and come before the Lord and say, Lord, please forgive me, Father. And he is just and able to forgive. Come on. He loves you. He loves you. And this morning, I want you to know that you stand in victory. Hallelujah. We stand in victory. The Bible says we win. We are winners. The Bible in fact says that we are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus has come to give you life and that life more abundantly. Yes, glory. I don't care what the enemy says, you are a winner. Yes. yes. You are victorious. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
You're not a victim. Hallelujah. You're not a victim of your circumstance. You're not a victim of your past. Yes, Jesus. You are a victor. Yes. In Jesus Christ. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to that last name. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Joe, I don't feel that way this morning. Well, put your feelings on the shelf. Yep. Let faith arise. Mm -hmm. Moses said every day when they took up the camp and they, they moved the camp, Moses would pray, Arise, Lord, and then let our enemies be scattered. Do you get up and do that every morning before you move your tent? Says the says the presence of the Lord, the the this body of ours is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Before you move his temple out, do you say, Arise, Lord, let my enemies be scattered? Yes, amen. God is faithful to his word. The Lord says, Blessed is your coming in and blessed is your going yes, out. Glory. This day. Yes. This day and yes. every day, Hallelujah. we're blessed coming in and going out. I proclaim that. Hallelujah. Yes. Isaiah 35 and verse 3 and 4 reads, Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the, free, the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, Be strong. Do not fear. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. Be strong. Do not fear. Be strong. Be strong and do not fear. Hallelujah. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Hallelujah. Whoa, Can the church really? say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Church, this is a simple message, but let me tell you, it is profound. Let your faith be stirred this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> there's so many There's so many things out there that you can hear the enemy saying. I'm, I'm going to tell you, if you turn the TV on, the radio on, if you just go to the store, right. Right. I hear church members talking about how bad it is on the church. How churches, I mean, even this morning, we're seeing attacks from the enemy. But right. we're not defeated. Yes, amen. We may be having to do things a little differently. But God doesn't want us sitting on the wall and sitting back and saying, well, let's just see what God does. Mm. Let's just see how far the enemy is going to take this. No. No. God says that we have to mix our faith with his promises. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord. In fact, and if you go back and read in Isaiah in the earlier chapters, chapter 20, chapter 25, chapter 28, time and time again, amongst all the rebellion and amongst all the things that the children did, God Hallelujah. still said, I, you're, <laughs> I'm giving you rest. Yes. I've given you ways of righteousness. Glory. But the Bible says in Isaiah that the people refuse the rest. What is the rest? The assurance and promises of God. Mm. The power of his, <laughs> uh, of his staying power for you and I. Yes. This word is infallible. Yes. This word never changes. I don't care what the media says. This is still the word of God. Yes. This is still power. This is dynamite power, as it says. Glory. I am God, and I change not. Hallelujah. We're the ones who change. Yes. But when they knew to turn around and go back and seek God, God answered their prayer. God gave them recompense. God gave them vengeance against this enemy. Church, I, I challenge you this morning to stand where you are. Oh, yes, Jesus. Don't open your mouth to the enemy. Keep your mouth closed. Yes. Don't reply to him. Don't give him any value by, by um, giving him affirmation, by, by giving him some sort of a confirmation that he, he really is all that and a bag of chips. He's not. But stand. Mm. When you've done, Paul said, when you've done all that you can do, when you've done all to stand, then he said, to stand. You may find yourself just like these, these people in this story. They didn't have any power, any strength. And all their hope was to say, Lord, maybe, maybe if you don't do it for us, would you at least do it because the enemy spoke ill of you? God did that and then some. And he'll do that for you today. He's not left you. God's not forsaken you. Right. He is there with you in the trials and the tribulations, no matter what you face. 
And this morning, I want us to make some declarations, if we will. Hallelujah. I want you to, to, to confess these with me. I'm just going to read a few things. Excuse me. I, I tell you what, I'm, the presence of the Lord is yes. heavy yes. Yes. in this place. I pray the anointing reaches through the, the sound of my voice through this uh, broadcast on Facebook and over the, over the phone lines. This morning, we're going we're gonna to make some affirmations of our own about our God. And I want you to I want you to say these with me. I am the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. And Satan has no power over me. And Satan has no power over me. For I overcome evil with good. For I overcome evil with good. I am of God. I am of God. And have overcome Satan. And I have overcome Satan. For greater is he. For greater is he. That is in me. That is in me. Than he that is in the world. Than he that is in the world. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. For thou art with me. Lord, your word. Lord, your word. And your spirit, and your spirit, they comfort me. Your spirit comfort me. I am far from oppression. I am far from oppression. And fear does not come near me. And fear does not come near me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against <laughs> Glory. me shall prosper. For my righteousness is of the Lord. For my righteousness is of the Lord. Whosoever... I do or uh, whatsoever I do whatsoever I do will prosper for will me prosper for me I'm like a tree I am like a tree planted by the waters planted by the waters I am delivered from the evils I am delivered from the evils of this present world of this present world for it is the will of God concerning me for it is the will of God concerning me no evil will befall me no evil will befall me neither shall any plague Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Come near my dwelling. For the Lord has given his angels charge over me. For his, the Lord has given his angels charge over me. And they keep me in all my ways. And they keep me in all my ways. And in my pathway, and in my pathway is, life, is life. And there is no death. And there is no death. I am a doer of the word of God. I am a doer of the word of God. I am blessed in my deeds. I am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do. I am happy in those things which I do. Because I'm a doer of the word of God. Because I'm a doer of the word of I God. I take the shield of faith. I take the shield of faith. And I quench every fiery dart. And I quench every fiery dart. That the wicked one brings against that me. That the wicked one brings against me. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. There I, therefore, I forbid any sickness. Therefore, I forbid forbid any sickness or disease to come upon my body or any disease to come upon my body every disease every disease germ germ every virus every virus that touches my body that touches my body dies instantly dies instantly in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every organ every organ every tissue in my body every tissue in my body functions normal functions normally in perfection in perfection in which God has created it to function in which God has created it to function and I forbid and I forbid any malfunction in my body any malfunction in my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I submit to God. I submit to God. And therefore the devil flees. And therefore the devil flees. <laughs> because I resist him in the name of Jesus. Because I resist him in the name of Jesus. The word is God. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. Therefore, I establish his word upon the earth. Therefore, I establish his word upon the earth. Great is the peace of my children. Great is the peace of my children. For they are taught of the Lord. For they are Woo! taught of the Lord. The spirit of truth abideth in me. The spirit of truth abideth with me. And teaches me all things. And teaches me all things. And he guides me. And he guides me. In all truth. In all truth. Therefore, I confess. Therefore, I confess. I have perfect knowledge of every situation. I have perfect knowledge of every situation. And every circumstance that I come up against. And every circumstance that I come up against. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I lean not in my own understanding. And I lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge Him. In all my ways, I acknowledge Him. And He, and he directs the, my path. 
And he directs my path. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. And I declare that you are my God in whom I trust. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust. And I have great confidence. And I have great confidence. Glory, hallelujah. Can you praise the Lord this morning? Today it is well. The devil is defeated. Hallelujah. And Jesus is Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Somebody just give praise to God right now. Hallelujah. We have victory in him. And we just thank you, Lord, this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every one of New Destiny Assembly of God, the Assemblies of God. Lord, I pray for those that are that are struggling this morning. Yes. I pray, Lord, the ones that may yes. find themselves sitting on the bylines, and Lord, yes. I pray you give them courage and to get off the fence and to get back in the game, Lord, to be the church this morning. In the name of Jesus, and we are victorious and we're conquer in the name of Jesus. God bless you, and we will see you next time. Praise the Lord.